Alright guys, welcome back. We got a little uh, free roll action here. Um, don't uh, be disappointed. We have some cash game action or uh, sit and go action coming up. We're just warming up. Remember, um, it's usually the best idea to warm up before you play for real money. Just like in sports, it's a good idea to stretch. Uh, that's essentially what we're doing. Uh, if we can win these free rolls, uh, even better. Um, usually my expectation is to win them, um, of course, with a high volume of players, uh, it sometimes it's not as easy to. <coughs> Here we're just trying to price the player in. We have a flush draw. Um, and it's a pretty good opportunity to hit a hand. Um, so, you know, usually it's the best strategy uh, to play your strong hands weak and your weak hands strong. Uh, here, though, the reason I uh, min raise the king deuce instead of just smooth call is because I realized that the low stakes players don't really understand what's going on. So I there with the king deuce, I just go ahead and make the value bet instead of uh, the trap bet. I'm also playing two other sit and goes, uh, or I should say MTTs. Uh, all three are free rolls, and uh, basically you get three times the uh, warming up uh, playing three than if you were playing one at a time. <coughs> Many of the poker sites you guys play on uh, probably have the option to play multiple tables. Uh, it's something I actually didn't know about until probably six or seven months ago. <sighs> okay, here we have the king tray, um, and instead of playing it fast like w we did last time, we're just going to smooth call here. And as you can see, we have some really good odds considering practically every player is in the pot here. <coughs> so we go ahead and opt for a call. Um, we're probably going to just check call or check raise the flop. Mainly it's a trapping play. Um, we also picked up the flush draw here. Uh, I'm not too excited about it. I mean, if these were all hearts, I'd be playing the hand exactly the same. Um, and if you if you don't understand, uh, let's see, yeah, call. If you don't understand the uh, value behind hands, uh, essentially, you have to think about the maths of poker and think to yourself, okay. Oh wow, we busted here. Yikes. Alright, uh. Whoops. Oh, what the hell? Alright. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause, or actually just get these tables up here. Luckily, we have another table up and running. Anyway, as I was saying, um. Let's get it squared away. Uh, if you're trying to understand uh, the strength of your hand, um, ask yourself, what hands can I beat and what hands beat me? So with the king tray, I can beat, uh, well, without listing them all, but let me give you a picture. I can beat 
queen jack, queen 10, queen 9, queen 7, queen 8, queen 3, <coughs> excuse me, queen 4, um, queen 10, essentially I can beat all the queen high hands, uh, same goes for the jack high hands, jack 10, jack 9, jack 8, jack 7, jack 6, so on and so forth. Um, and the only hands that beat me are ace, deuce, ace, three, ace, four, ace, five, ace, six, ace, seven, ace, eight, ace, nine, ace, jack, ace, queen, ace, king, pocket aces. Uh, furthermore, mathematically, uh, most pocket pairs are ahead. Uh, I should say probably all, but, oh wow, looks like I've pa played with this guy. Well, we don't have any notes on him. Uh, he's probably a high stakes player here. Um, <clears throat> anyway, most pocket pairs are ahead of the queen, uh, of the king tray, however, we have a lot of draws when we're holding the king tray, whereas pocket pairs have very few draws. Um, let's go ahead and bet for value here. Uh, normally I'd fold here. However, because we're playing a free roll, I realize these players are not very uh, competent. And we hit quads. Um, you know, that happens every once in a while or if you do a lot of playing uh, it happens a lot <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and queue up the uh, real money sit and go table and I'll probably just probably just minimize and switch screens if alright um, <laughs> sorry about that. Go ahead and register. Um, we'll go ahead and play a turbo. I think, uh, we haven't played a turbo. The plan was to play a turbo last time. And we didn't get to it because we had... <coughs> We okay, I'm I'm having trouble thinking here. I'm playing so many tables. Oh uh, yeah, easy call. Uh let's see, what was I saying? Yes, last time we planned on playing a turbo, however Oh wow. That's about the sickest beat I've ever seen. This guy has no business being in the pot and then he Hits his miracle card. Wowzers. Anyway, we, we were planning to play a turbo last time, and instead I chose to play a heads-up game. Um, here, you know, but we're, we're building a pretty good uh, chip lead here. We're in the top 15. Um, the brilliant part about a chip lead is if somebody has less chips than you, um you cover them uh here's the money tournament go ahead and focus on this table <laughs> here we have a decent hand um And this guy's all in, uh, which is perfect. We have an opportunity to bust a player here. So, whenever you're a chip leader, that's basically your duty. Uh, it's to bust the the players. Um, and what's even better here is we're getting a lot of action from all the players. Um, so essentially we can actually be busting three players here. Uh, notice these two guys folded 
after I re-raised. I'm guessing they know who I am. Um, because obviously I'm aware of my actions, you know, um, I know some players will say, oh, uh, he re-raised, he has a dominant hand. And obviously in that situation, okay, we're, we're playing two tables at once here. In that situation, I would play my hand differently. <coughs> but here, because we're playing with uh, basically swine, um, wow, this guy has re-raised me about five times here. And essentially what I was trying to uh, implicate here was that I had a huge hand. I'm going to ask him if he has aces. I'm going to let it go. Um, and he had nines. And it looks like we all three of us would have chopped it. But when push comes to shove, I made the correct fold. Um, I was beat, and there's no reason to be putting extra chips into the pot when you know you're behind. Anyway, um, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this table and Firefox. Yeah, what the hell? I have about, I just have no idea where the cash game went. Uh, there's just so many screens. Oh, uh, there it is. Okay. Uh, it seems I was sitting out. Okay. So, we're warmed up, um, usually I'll warm up a little, a little longer, you know, an hour or two, uh, maybe from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m., and then, you know, then your mind is fresh, and so you can eat some breakfast. Uh, a key to winning is a good diet brain food it's called um, as well as uh, I'm not sure I should be advocating the use of drugs but um, how can I put this delicately uh, if you can get yourself a subscription or prescription of I don't know um, some Adderall or something something that speeds up your brain and uh, helps you focus. Uh, obviously there are street drugs. Um, uh, using those uh, types of substances can greatly increase your performance at the table. Let's just put it that way. Now, should you be using it? Yes, no. That's basically up to you, but... Um, that's all I'll say about that subject. Okay, so let's get back on tangent. Um, tourney info. We're five out of nine, uh, which is not good shape. Uh, preferably, we want to either be down to three or four blinds, or we want to have the chip lead. Uh, here, I accidentally click fold. I don't know why. So, basically... Uh, when you go into the tank and you ask yourself am I going to win this tournament or not uh, there comes a decision and it's almost as if as if your mind reaches the twilight zone which is exactly why you need to be playing the twilight zone strategy 
um, if you want to be winning tournaments. Uh, as you see right here, I, I pretty much handled this, this mom uh, with my two bare hands, and I did uh, as I wished with her. Um, now, uh, hopefully there's no sexual connotation in that. Uh, I appreciate all moms. Uh, we all have one. Um, but metaphorically speaking, I, I had my way with her, uh, and that's all due to the Twilight Zone strategy. <coughs> Here we have threes. Uh, the reason we didn't fold is, um, we're, we're playing for Twilight value, which basically is a fancy way of saying, uh, the threes are good. Uh... Furthermore, low pocket pairs play very well in multi-way pots. Um, so, when the flop comes six, deuce, king, jack, um, an obvious play that I see people make, they think it's obvious, they say, Oh, I missed my set, I'm going to go ahead and check fold. Well, ask yourself this. Do you have a pair or do you not have a pair? Well, the answer will be yes, I do have a pair. Well then, second of all, answer this. What are the odds of my opponent having a king? Okay, well let's do the math. Um, and here we're going to fold because somebody obviously hit the flush. Uh, remember, uh, the rule of flush is if, if there's a possible flush, somebody will have it. Checkmate. Anyway, um, so after you answer yourself, you say, yes, I do have a pair. Then what you want to ask yourself is, what are the odds of my opponent pairing the board? Okay, well, there was a king and a six, so there's uh, four kings in the deck. So the odds of him hitting a king or something like I'd say 3 in 89 so 3 out of 89 times he hits his king uh, same with the 6, 3 out of 89 that's 6 out of 178 factor that down and uh, practically uh, I don't want to get too mathematical here, but I ho hopefully I cleared up the picture. Uh, usually your your pair is good. Okay, this is a pretty uh, crazy twilight play. And what we're doing here is we're stealing this dead money here. At the same time, we're leaving uh, ourselves with some leverage here. <coughs> And as you can see, uh, I handled four people effortlessly. Now, let me show you again. Here, hopefully, we get some action. Um, right now, our image is solid, and we do get some action. Um, right now, our image is solid, so people will be respecting our raises. Here, obviously, we're up against another big hand. Uh, possibly... 9-6 suited pocket deuces. Ace-king. It's, it's a fairly strong hand. Unfortunately for him, he was messing with the wrong guy. Uh, so we've picked one player off. Uh, and Snappo says nice. I tend to build a fan base quite rapidly when I play. So we've we've built some chips here. Um, we are now the chip leader. And the beauty of being a chip leader is you you don't ever have to fold a hand pre-flop. 
because if you think about it, it's impossible for you to bust. If, scientifically speaking, if somebody has less chips than you, you cannot be knocked out. <clears throat> Hence, we need to raise our aggression and stop folding. Uh, it's a strategy I've seen many pros use on television. Uh, in fact, let's see, today I was watching the World Series of Poker. Um, and this Italian guy uh, was on, I forget what his name, Dario something? Anyway, he he has close to the chip lead, maybe even the chip lead, and in the span of one hour, I saw him play literally every hand. Okay, um, here we made an aggressive stab at the pot, and as you can see, there's two clubs, so the chances are somebody has a flush draw, and we're going to fold. Um, okay, our outs were dead, but... I still feel we made the correct play pre-flop and on the flop, just didn't work out. Um, we're gonna go ahead and twilight some more. Uh, this is uh the number of the beast here, six six six. This is uh witchcraft and devil's work, so it's an intimidation play, as you can see there. Um. You know, some some other digits you can put in, or uh, I personally don't use this because I don't think it's ethical, out of respect for uh, certain people. But uh, I, uh, you know, you you can uh, put in nine one one, um, and uh, take it for what it's worth. <coughs> uh, an interpretation could be uh, that that you're the authority, you're a police officer, some something, and you've come to arrest the players. So usually they'll give up the hand. Or uh, the reason why I don't use it is because of uh, the terrorist bombing. So some people might think, uh, you know, you're some kind of sick terrorist or something. <coughs> So basically things are still going well. We're now second in chips, um, which is a bummer. Um, so usually when you lose the chip lead like that, you, you kind of want to reflect on basically the essence of your strategy, the essence of your opponent's strategy. Uh, you want to tap into the brains of your opponents, and to do that, it's kind of difficult. I mean, you look at hints, you analyze the player's name, you look at the avatar, um, you look at the amount of chips he has. These are all clues into what the player is like. In fact, oftentimes I will just Google people's names here. And you never know what comes up. In fact, let's do that right now. Um, hold on. GGL Y H Y A Shark Scope him. Let's see. Yes, we have a match. Uh for those of you who don't know, Shark Scope is a tool a free website that lets you uh, see certain players 
tournament results on certain sites mainly poker stars and full tilt I believe okay he's lost uh, a good amount so it seems uh, this is a poor player wow he's lost 175 bucks playing um, playing dollar tournaments which is amazing okay let's go for a uh, twilight play here one two three basically indicates that we're learning how to count that we're playing like children um, that we're toying with our opponents and we don't care if we get called or not the message is sent <clears throat> Yikes. If we had the chip lead, this would be an easy call considering he's a losing player, but here we don't have the chip lead. We don't want to risk our tournament life at stake. Uh, I don't believe the latter part of that sentence made sense. However, bear with me. I'm not very good at English. I haven't read a book in probably close to a decade. Let's go ahead and pump this up here. Uh, and I perform poorly in my English classes, so it puts a little perspective on the situation. Anyway, uh, so let's compare myself to this imbecile here. Um, I believe these stats are probably flawed. Um, you never know what type of, um, y where these people are getting stats from. I mean, frankly, I think it's impossible to have a person tracking thousands of tables being played at, at, um, any point in time. So, I guess this could be a very good player, if we think about it. Uh, right there you see why um, so it's a good idea uh, when you see that <sighs> whoops when you see that a player makes a good play and you've researched him online and obviously the website is faulty it's a good idea to add some notes so that you don't confuse yourself. Three, two, one. Basically, we were uh, reversing the uh, the situation here. Sometimes we'll go one, two, three. Other times we'll go three, two, one. You know. Yikes. This is very funny. In the chat, somebody says, lol at your gay raises. Uh, and this person says, bye bye water boat. Little does she know is that uh, I'm a very skilled uh, short stack player. In fact, that's my comfort zone. Uh, we'll put a note here as well as for this guy later. Um, um, I don't really want to uh, repeat what I typed in. I know the resolution on Google is not the best, but out of respect for the female audience, I will not
Okay, I basically called her a cunt. Um, and she's shooting her mouth off, which is fine. We like it when people are on tilt or somehow usually when somebody's talking smack it signal signals that they are insecure so we have, we appreciate that um, we know it's just easier for us to bust this person here um, furthermore she could be mad that we're using the twilight strategy here we have 8-6. It's a great opportunity to double up. Um, hopefully we can hit our out. Okay, we hit our out, but... Um, unfortunately, he hit his. Uh, overall, it was a good video. You guys saw how I warm up. Then I uh, bring my, my true game to the table. Uh, not the best result, but you guys did see how I was able to handle the, the table uh, using uh, the Twilight strategy. And hopefully you guys got some good information out of this. Um, I think it's a long video, so uh, feel free to discuss it. Um, you guys can always shoot PMs or whatever if you ever want to have some deeper discussion. I'll stop talking now. See you guys later.